What's up to everybody that's uh, following me, following Flavor Fest, all the people that follow Jerry. Um, grateful you guys are here jumping in today. If you don't know about Flavor Fest, it is an urban leadership conference that we do in Tampa, Florida. Uh, we've been doing it for over two decades. Jerry knows about it. He's got a crazy story that he's going to share about it today. That's uh, I didn't even know about it until he was at Flavor Fest and spoke this past year yeah. and uh, killed it, by the way. So we do it every year. It's to train uh, leaders that are in the urban context, uh, multi-ethnic churches that are using hip hop and outreach and churches that are created and are kind of remixing it and doing it out of the box. There's a whole tribe of churches like that. Yeah. And uh, so we started Flavor Fest in the year 2000. It's been rocking for a minute, trained thousands of leaders. And then, of course, we have the Hip Hop Music Festival that is both two nights, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we have the top names in Christian hip hop that are there every year. So everybody that you can name has been there from Lecrae to KB to everybody from 116. We had D1 there this past year, uh, 1K Few, Brian Trejo, Bizzle. I mean, and then lots of up and coming artists. A lot of artists have been discovered at Flavor Fest. Jerry Flowers almost got discovered at yeah. Flavor Fest. So <laughs> anyways, so we got a big announcement. So stay tuned for a little bit today. We got a big announcement about Flavor Fest this year. A lot of y'all been asking us, uh, when is the registration going up? When is the artist submissions going up? What are the dates? So I'm going to announce that today in just a little bit. And we're doing something this year that we have never done before for Flavor Fest. And so super excited to share that. God's put something big on our hearts. Yeah. And I'm in New York City right now. And uh, I'm in a hotel room, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit why I'm here in a minute as well. But, uh, Jerry, man, thanks for joining us, bro. Thanks for the hanging with the technical difficulties, yeah. man. No problem, man. You know we're family, bro. We had – when we met with Kindred Spirits, man, so it's it's an honor, bro. And this ain't the last time, too. So I, I know we're going to – life on life, I could already sense that. No, nah, definitely, man. And, well, I, I'd seen some of your stuff on IG, and then last year my team was, like, telling me, like, yo, we got to invite this dude, Jerry Flowers. Like, he's he's killing it, man. Check his content out. And so, you know, we looked at it and we're like, all right, let, let, let's go. And and I'll be honest with you, man, that that is probably one of the first times that we invited somebody that we didn't have a relationship with. Normally, everybody that we invite to be a general session speaker, somebody we kind of know, they know us. And, but little did we know, we did know you, and you did know yeah. us. And so, <laughs> man, t tell everybody about that, that story real quick as we, we jump it off. I want to get in and talk about you a little bit more, but talk about our, our connection that, was, that I didn't even know about. Um, so I used to do Christian rap a long, long time ago, maybe like 2009. Um, I was a student pastor, and it was just one of the ways to create an atmosphere where young people could come together, fellowship. Uh, we had pizza, we would open the scriptures, and just, just really trying to give uh, my student ministry an alternative from the thing that culture, you know, gives them. Yeah. So once I started uh, doing music, some churches started inviting me to come do their, their youth nights, whatever. And so I heard about Flavor Fest, and I sent a... Uh, I forgot the pack. It was like a packet if you want to be a part of it. Yes, submission package. And I got rejected. I got rejected. I mean, just like, no. Sorry. Not coming. <laughs> you don't have it. <laughs> I'm just playing. But no. uh, so it was last year when I um, got the booking request for Flavor Fest and I came back to cross over. I was like, yo, we low key got beef because I tried to come here. <laughs> <laughs> in 2009 but hey it worked out totally perfect yeah um so the timing was right so that's, that that's kind of like the connection yeah yeah let me let me say this to you man remind you that the artist submissions we only have about about 18 to 20 slots for indie artists that we have every year and they get a five minute slot and they get to perform before the headliners or in the mix of the headliners we have two nights so we have about uh, eight, eight to ten each night, yeah. and uh, we might mix them in at a few other points throughout the weekend as well. So we try to include as many as we can, but we generally every year get about 60 to 70 submissions. Yes. And so to whittle that down to like 18 to 20, like more than two-thirds of people, we have to say no. And sometimes it's really hard, man, because yeah. there's a lot of great talent. 
there's a lot of people that are doing great stuff. Yeah. And sometimes we'll end up choosing people that had submitted two or three years and we'll be like, right. we'll, we'll put them up on the list because we're like, yo, we were thinking about this person last year, but they didn't quite, quite make the cut, yeah. but they submitted again and oh, check this song out. All right, we're going to, they, they came in the submissions uh, yeah. queue twice so yeah. we don't it this time. So, so yeah, man, so know that. And this past year, I think was like our hardest year ever. There's just a lot of great, great talent out there but it's funny man because god still had it you know in his will had yeah. it in the cards so they say yeah. uh for you you to come and, and be connected yeah. and you didn't have to submit this time like you got invited you got, <laughs> got tapped on the shoulder and That's you were dropping works. some bars sir <laughs> you, you were still dropping some bars man yeah. and you opened up the first general session on thursday night and our theme was revive and you really kind of helped kick kick off the whole the whole weekend with uh just a great great atmosphere got everybody inspired encouraged and everything from there was just was up so yeah. you know thank you for coming man and, and look forward to continue to build and then as we've talked you know a couple of times since then find that you know we have a lot of stuff in common so you like myself are pk yeah passive kid yeah so man t tell me a little bit about your background the people that that follow me and follow flavor fest uh, may not fully know about the Jerry Flowers uh, background yeah. and uh, how you grew up and, and where. And so talk a little bit about that, man, the struggles okay. of a PK. <laughs> yeah. Um, to just be 100% candid, if if my parents were, if my parents did not live out the gospel, I probably would be an atheist. I probably would be an atheist or agnostic because the church can be really, really messy, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a different perspective now that, you know, the church is the hospital. I understand that. But everybody can't be sick, you yep. see. Oh, so oh, yeah. um, my my perspective has changed over the years from uh, being a PK, seeing the things that my parents have gone through, seeing, you know, people that we love, we serve, just leave. Just leave, you know, no, no, no closure. <laughs> it does. Uh, the conversation of church hurt, I don't think people really consider the pastors. It's always what other people did or something they didn't like. And, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, so just seeing their faithfulness is what really actually brought me to the Lord. Um, went to Westfield High School. Uh, then I went to Texas Southern University. That's where I really had my uh, encounter with Jesus. Uh, when I recognized that my life was fraudulent, I thought I would say because I was a PK, bro. Yep. Um, but I recognize you can't, can't get fooled by watching somebody else eat. So I had to develop my own relationship with the Lord. And from there, I just felt compelled to uh, be discipled and then help others. And so that's kind of how the PK journey uh, mutated into being a student pastor was once I got saved for real, I was like, okay, we need to have the gospel on a more digestible level. You know, not changing the message, but changing the method. And yeah. so that's kind of how I went from student pastor to rapping. And that rapping led me to meet Tanisha. And that's like a real capsule version of my journey from the PK student pastor to how I got to where I am now. So, so when, when was some of that transformation happening? Was that, you said, around the college age? Yes, I was about to pledge a fraternity. I was in the club and I just didn't feel... I didn't feel it. Like when you have when you have your roommate come to you like, bro, you don't even look like you belong here. You don't even look like you're enjoying it. I wasn't. Yeah. It was hot. It smelled like weed and black and mild. And it was just like this <laughs> I, I, I it was forced. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It was forced acceptance of my roommates. It was forced acceptance of a fraternity. And it was just I just had this tension on the inside, man. I think a lot of times people always say, I wait to hear God tell me. A lot of times he speaks through that inward tension, yeah. you know, and, and that's what it was for me. Like, th this isn't me. And I'll never forget it, bro. I, I went home that night, read Titus 116. Um, they profess to know God, but by their deeds, their actions, they deny him. And I looked at my roommate and said, yo, bro, this is us. He's like, nah, man, we're going to church in the morning. I said, bro, but we don't, we don't live this joint. And then that's how my journey kind of happened with 13 letters, uh, with 116. Uh, hearing of the cray, hearing of the truth, hearing of ambassador, because I was like, 
if I'm gonna change my music, bro, I'm not listening to no disrespect. I'm not listening to like Mighty Clouds of Joy or yeah. Kenton Spirituals. They love the Lord, but that wasn't it yeah. for me. <laughs> I'm right <laughs> you know with you, bro. So that that the the hip hop, the Christian hip hop at that time of my life really was the push of bro, you, you could be young and unashamed and love Jesus yeah. and be humble and be dope and be passionate and be real Come on. and be spiritual. But not so spiritual it's where you know earthly good. And yeah. so that was that was it, bro. That was kind of like the metamorphosis time for my life. Man, that's good, bro. Yeah, we got we got a lot in common. I was in college and I was doing some stuff that I shouldn't have did, and there was that tension there, man, because I was raised yeah. to know the truth. And right. I knew the truth was real. I knew God was real, but I wanted to taste the yeah. world. I had been kind of a little bit isolated and insulated by my, you know, parents protecting me and there was rules and boundaries. And then you get to college and some of those boundaries are gone. You're like, yo, you know? And so I was forcing some stuff too, but feeling that tension and then soon realizing like, this is, yeah, this is not, this is not what it was cracked up to be. And so, yeah, it was, it was my, it was when I was in college that I had that transformation as well. And then that calling to feel like I'm called to do ministry. It's not going to look like my dad's ministry. Yeah. It's going to be very different. Like you said, I really, you know, wanted to translate uh, the gospel to the culture. You know, I wanted to to reach people that were like me, my friends. And, and so when I first, here's my, here's my side of it. Like when I first came to the Lord, I was like, man, I got to start dressing different. I got to start listening to choir music. I got to, you know, like you said, and I was like, but at first I was like willing to be like, all right, well, man, it's just, yeah, they say you change, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, but man, I felt like the Holy Spirit soon give me permission to be like, nah, be you, uh, the, the, the environment you grew up in, the passions you have, you know, the love you even have for, for hip hop and whatnot, like you yeah. can still use that. And so for me, I did start rapping as well and use that as, you know, a way to reach so many different people. And there was, you know, then I got plugged into the Christian hip hop that was out there. I'm a little bit before your time, yeah. but it was cross movement and, and some of even the guys in the late nineties and stuff like that, that that's when I was making my transition, my change. And yeah. so yeah, some of them were at Flavor Fest this year, you know, uh, soup from SFC, yeah. it's like a real OG in the yeah. CHA space. So, but yeah, man, that's, yeah. yeah, being a PK is no joke. I've seen a lot of stuff as well that was ugly, the way people act behind the scenes and the power struggle. But yeah, I, I have a similar, uh, uh, you know, experience as you where my parents, man, they were solid yeah. and they were sold out. And I got to see that behind the scenes. So that's that's what kept me kept me going. Yeah, man. So so tell uh, tell everybody from Flavor Fest, man, a little bit about. I know you got a lot of your people watching as well, mm -hmm. but um like what the transition has been like where you went from doing student ministry like you said with pizza and yeah. hip-hop and yeah. all that and translating you know the gospel to the, the culture to now um you're your pastor yeah. and it's kind of a unique situation yeah you're you're using the same facility as uh as your, your dad correct yes sir so here's the thing that i didn't recognize being a student pastor was my pastor Right. Mm -hmm. It was my hidden. Nobody yeah. knew me, but I was learning how to use my slingshot. You see, I was learning how to be an effective fighter. I was learning the word and in, in, in the pasture. So the way I preach, the way I teach now is heavily influenced by being a student pastor for nine years. Yeah. yeah. The, the illustrations, um, how I really, really strive to take a meaty scripture and dissect it so small to where somebody off the, like I, like when I preach, I view like I got several seats. I have the theologian there. Yeah. I got the person who's on the fence there. I got the individual who's like heard about Jesus, but not necessarily into him. Then I got the person that's totally unchurched that doesn't know anything about this. And you just heard a message from TikTok and your girl invited you, so you pulled up to the church. And then there's somebody who grew up in church uh, but they just kind of lost their way. So I tried to reach every yeah. single seat. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And I learned that through student ministry. Teenagers yep. are not going to say amen. Nope. They're not going to say that was good. <laughs> They're not going to clap. 
So oh, for me, I, if you can preach to teenagers and college students, then you got something. Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're, if they don't like you, they'll fall asleep, they'll text, whatever. So that was my challenge to really get 15 and 16 and 17 year olds to engage in the gospel. And so now it's pretty much the same. Um, of course, I could be a little more meaty, but I break it down the same way. I try to get people to understand it, the same passion I had with my teenagers. So um, the transition for myself was natural. Mm -hmm. I think for the church culture that I that I was in, it was different. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's kind of like you, what you said, Tommy. It's not like my parents, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like my, my parents. Same message, different method. Yeah. And then being being becoming the lead pastor in the the middle of a pandemic that was bro i was like all right go ahead you could be late pastor now like all right all right but it was actually actually you know as tragic as 2020 and 2021 was i always be i'm always sensitive to how i address it because that was devastating for a lot of people i know personally yeah. Um, that was the launching pad for my ministry. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was like we were quarantined. I already had my fish, my, my fishing line in the water. And when everybody had to search, boom, it was there. It yeah. was there. So I didn't have to try to figure out the camera, the technology that I was already doing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Man. And that's good. So it was just in during the pandemic. So it is, mm -hmm. it is recent, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, this it, it's twofold because to people watching on the outside, it's like, oh, this new guy, this new pastor. I've been preaching since nineteen, bro. Yeah, you know, um, new to you, but yeah. I've been striving to grow in the Lord and faithfulness for decade, for over a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's faithfulness in the shadows, and I don't care about the spotlight. I really don't, and I think that's why, you know, individuals. Like you and I, we can speak so truthfully because I don't do this for a like. Mm -hmm. When you come from a PK, bro, I know that that's fleeting. You could say Hosanna in the highest on one day, then crucify him the next day. So yep. I'm going to be yeah. straight up with you. Yeah. But I love you one day in a comment, <laughs> pass out, do anything yeah. for you. Two months later, they're gone. Yeah. They're yeah. Out. <laughs> no. Don't say nothing either. Nothing. No. You know, no. Um, it used to be extremely hurtful when I recognized how people could just leave like that yeah. uh, until, you know, in prayer, a uh, guy really revealed to me, you, you can't be an effective physician if you keep on getting sick from everybody's virus that you're trying to treat. Mm -hmm. So I have to have that affirmations mm -hmm. before them so that when things like that happen, I don't take it personal. Yeah. 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 One thing I've had to realize over the years is like everybody that walks to the doors um i look at them like it's it's a gift that they're here mm -hmm. right now yeah and they may be here for some of them the wrong reasons but they're here right now yeah. and some of them are going to be here maybe for a long time some of them are going to be here for a short season no matter what it is i want to try to maximize the moment and and pour into them and point them to jesus and help disciple them as much as i can and you know although I try, i'm an extrovert i love relationships and talking to people and building with people, but I have to just also guard my heart and realize it's okay if they're not going to be here forever. I'm going to enjoy this moment right now. And, yeah. uh, and that's okay. Cause now for me, been in this over two decades, I've seen a lot of people come and go and yeah. Uh, yeah, in the earlier years, it would be like hurtful, man. Like, Oh man, that was my dog. Or we did so much together. I, I did his dad's funeral. Or I was, their marriage counseling him and his wife or you know all those yeah. things um and then you just have to realize like god used you um at a pivotal time in their life and you know prayerfully you know those seeds that were planted yeah. and god is doing something else in their life now yeah. and many times that's the case sometimes it's not because <laughs> they chose to do different things yeah but um still pray for them that god's going to bring them back uh, yeah. to him ultimately so yeah and so Something uh, I really try to use like um, theological principles to help me formulate my stance on things. So like Jesus says, you know, some reap a harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So when I encounter with people or as I'm leading, discipling, I really do have this mindset, Tommy. Some people are 30% people. Some give a mm. harvest 30, 60. 
And how I get hurt is when I expect the 60% from the 30 individuals. Yeah, you're so if, right. Really. If there's a 30, I'm like, okay, let me use you in the serving of the kingdom for that 30. Yeah. You, you're not going to... You're not going to stay, you know, clean up and do all that. That's not you, but you might do parking lot ministry. Yeah. So that's what you hear. And so learning that first principle helped me. And then recognizing how Jesus operated with relational management. He spoke to thousands, sent out 72, selected 12, but was really vulnerable with three. And mm -hmm. that has been a game changer, bro. Yeah. Game yeah. changer. Because when you, when you treat the thousand like you're supposed to handle the three, heartbreak is imminent. Oh, you know? That's good, bro. You see, there only there was only three that he took to the top of the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Nine mm -hmm. had to stay in the valley, you know. So if I can't discern the mountain top from the valley, I'm gonna take Judas up there with me. Mm -hmm. You see, still mm -hmm. serve Judas, still be there for him. But mm -hmm. that's not the that's not the one mm -hmm. I take up top. So that wisdom, learning how Jesus handled that relational management, it has protected mm -hmm. my heart, where I can still love people with wisdom. That's good leadership principles right there, bro. Yeah. If out there, the leader in ministry, take some notes on yeah. that. That was, that, was some, uh, that was some fire right there. Yeah. Man, so, so tell, tell me a little bit about Therapy Thursdays and how that developed. And and that's become like a whole thing now, bro. Yeah. And that's helped so many people, man, especially through the pandemic. Uh, we recently did a series called Triggered about you know, the end part of 2022, we did that for, it was only going to be five weeks. We ended up extending it to like seven weeks because so many people we realized were dealing with, you know, all kinds of emotional and mental health issues. Yeah. Man. So that's me, the big need right now. Yeah. So before I met the Lord, I was a pre-med major. Um, after mm -hmm. I got saved, I was like, okay, I'm going to need to know how to talk and I'm going to need to understand how the body works. So I switched my major to communications and mm -hmm. psychology. Uh, so once I graduated with that, then Masters in Divinity, I already, ha I already had a background of you have to be able to communicate to people, but they have to be able to be healed enough to hear what you're saying. Like, can they hear what I'm saying without the trauma rewording it, right? And so as I was doing counseling sessions, premarital counseling, I was seeing like, yo, man, there's some like biblical standards requirements mm. that people can't do if they're not healed mm -hmm. and it just it just it was an epiphany one night and i was like man okay love your neighbor you know like you love yourself if they don't love themselves yep. they're not going to be able to love their neighbor give and it shall be given unto you so that's the heart of generosity all this is bible mm -hmm. if all i've known is takers i'm not going to be a giver because i don't yeah. want to be hurt like and so i recognize like yo we need to get healed here so yeah. that the kingdom things that we're hearing here can penetrate our heart and we can carry them out. So Word. last 2021, uh, I was feeling this 2022. I was like, okay, we're going to do therapy Thursdays online only because I'm seeing that pattern. And that was really what I was seeing in my church in my experience. I didn't necessarily consider globally, um, but it, that it, it just kind of like um, grew, which let me know that was a spirit breathing on me. Like, yeah, there are people who want to obey, but trauma won't let them. There, there are people who want to love others, but trauma won't let them. Mm -hmm. Introduce them to me, heal the trauma, then they can follow the doctrine. That makes sense? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So that's really kind of how that started, was just the counseling sessions, the small groups, man, just recognizing that it's not blatant rebellion. They're just, mm -hmm. just, they're just hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. trauma's affected their ability to hear. So that's that's what Therapy Thursday kind of was birthed out of. Well, man, thank you for doing it. I know there's a number of people, even in my church, that that regularly tune in and watch, and it's been helping them. There's been some free therapy yeah. online, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's free, <laughs> man. It's free, man. So, <laughs> so thank you, man, for, uh, for pouring into so many different people, man, even some people that are part of my my church family, my my congregation, man. We uh, We appreciate it. Yeah. So I know we've been talking a little bit um, here and there, man, about some of the, the next steps and the dreams, man, for you guys as a church. And so, yeah. so I don't know how public some of that stuff is. I know you got to be talking about it a little bit. Yeah. Man. So, so yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit here and what you guys are dreaming about so we can all, you know, be praying and agreeing, man, for uh, the future. 
Yeah. So just raw, we need a bigger building. Yeah. That's that's raw. Uh, we didn't even talk about this yet, Tommy. Last Sunday, bro, we had a serious problem. Mm. People were walking down the street. Now, we have buses. We have shuttle buses that could transport people from, there's an elementary school um, not too far, or maybe 300 feet or so from mm -hmm. our church that our shuttle bus will get them and bring them over where they don't have to walk. Um, but people were walking. We had police officers trying mm -hmm. to navigate the, the traffic. And the sanctuary is filled to capacity. The overflows are filled. And so it's 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 a overflows. blessing. Overflows, like plural. Plural. <laughs> wow. um, now, I felt some type of way about it because I was like, man, people are going to think if I have to come here and sit in the overflow, I might as well just watch it online. And so that was really bothering me. And, you know, my mind was kind of bothered about it. But yeah. talking to people, they're like, we just got to get earlier as long as I'm in the building. Mm -hmm. And so one girl, she kind of changed my perspective because she was sitting in the overflow. She flew in. Um, and didn't get a chance to get a sanctuary. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry that you didn't get here. And she was like, I remember when, when I could not come to church. The pandemic had it to where we could not. I'm just glad to be in the building. There's something about the atmosphere. So uh, that kind of gave me a different perspective. But uh, I'm like, God, I asked for a baby. You gave it to me. Um, I asked for it to be a boy. You gave that to me. Uh, Tanisha underlined in her first few weeks of pregnancy, they were considering that she might have placenta previa. I said, God, please heal it. Mm. He healed it. So I'm like, you hear me? I'm asking for a building. You hear yeah. me? But obviously there's a setup that he wants to do because we're probably at like 1157 on what we going to do. <laughs> so mm. I'm like, all right, God, it's almost 11.59. I know you like leading us right to Red Seas. I know you like yeah. us smelling the stench of a lion's den before. I, I know that's your MO. I, that's your method. So my, my, my spiritual perspective understands that God is setting us up. Uh, practically and naturally, it is kind of like, okay, what is going to happen? So, But I'm grateful, man. I'm grateful. That's kind of like my message on Sundays and called Enjoy the Rain. Uh, many churches have foreclosed, bro. Uh, I know, man. Yeah, we had that conversation. This is... This is not a problem. You're like, it's a problem. Yeah. It's not the problem that 99.9% .9 of churches are having right now post-pandemic. I just uh, talked about this on Sunday. We revealed what our vision is at our church for 2023. And our, our word that God gave us for this year is rebrand, changing the narrative about the church. Yeah. And, you know, the culture and social media and mainstream media, the narrative about the church is, is not necessarily a positive one. And, uh, you know, this article, news article that came out about two weeks ago, um, statistics show that about one third of church attendance is gone post pandemic. Mm -hmm. So most churches are only at best two thirds of what they used to be. And I have many friends, especially in the urban context where, you know, COVID hit people even harder in a lot of ways that their churches are still only at 40% of what they used to be. So, uh, so to hear your church is like overflowing is uh man that's that that's a problem that most people would love to have and uh that's a miracle man and uh, our church is not overflowing but we are larger than we were pre-pandemic three years ago and uh you know our one of our services is getting really full now and we're like man like you know trying to figure it out add some more chairs and it's, it's good problems and, yeah. and god is moving so churches that i think like that have that that approach like what you talked about where we're taking the word we're breaking it down for people and we're thinking about all those different people that are in the seats yeah. because if you want to reach today's culture is so eclectic and you know not my church is you've been there it's very diverse we're multi-ethnic multi-generational multi-class and even the multi-class piece can be one of the more challenging ones yeah. Because discipleship has to look different for people that are at different educational and experiential economic levels. And so, you know, you got to always be thinking when you're creating that message, what are the questions that this kind of person would have? And what about that person? And let me touch this person. Let me make sure there's something, yeah. you know, so challenging. There's that tension there mm -hmm. to try to balance it all out. And of course, there's going to be some messages that lean a little bit towards one seat more than the other. Yeah. Um, but that's great that you're doing that, man. And you're thinking that way uh, because a lot of, a lot of pastors, 
unfortunately, churches just don't. They're just like, this is the meal we're going to give, and just you like it or you don't. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. And that's why, you know, you need to think about that. Not that we're watering it down at all. We're preaching yeah. it, but repackaging it, remixing it, rebranding it. Yeah. 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 And, and then, too, uh, I think for the church world, the pandemic and COVID really kind of revealed those that weren't saying that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Lukewarm faith won't get you in a hell in a hellish season. It won't keep you. Yeah. So if you he got up, okay, we understand. We understand that he got up. We understand the significance mm -hmm. and the beauty of his resurrection. But how do I deal with my mind though? What do I do with my lust though? You know. Yeah. So it kind of revealed those who were stuck in a form of religion. Um, yeah. You just, just went out of went to church to check off your box of religious duty. I did that today. Um, mm -hmm. Versus, it's almost like the first shall be last, and last but last will be first. It's like the pandemic did this. Yeah, <laughs> it's like those who seem last because you're only last until everything turns around. Yeah, turns around. That's good. That's good. Boom. You know, so. If you weren't saying anything anyway, if you didn't help people grow in Christ anyway, yeah, and those who just came to service because of a religious duty anyway, they're gone. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, mm -hmm. doesn't totally fall on the church, because I know people like to blame the church. Uh, sometimes that's the people. God is good only when life isn't. God is good only when life is. Mm -hmm. But when life if isn't good, God isn't good. Yeah. Wow. So it, it goes both both ways mm -hmm. on uh, the church attendance thing. It exposed not only the pastor, but then also the people. Is yeah. God only good when you get sunshine? What about when it rains? Because mm -hmm. if you only get sunshine, you're going to be a desert. You're going to make me preach, bro. Come on, man. They're not talking about the, the full picture of everything. Right. And when you're given that partial picture and then reality mm. is not that picture for a long time, yeah. like you're going to be in trouble. Mm. And yeah, like you said, I think the pandemic was a big, it was a big filter and it filtered out a lot of people that were just on the fringes and just playing church and not really all in. And at the same time, it was also uh, for another group of people, it was drawing them back to God right. and it opened to spiritual things like never before. And, you know, whenever there's trial, tribulations, or trouble, turmoil, all those T's, um, people come looking for God, you know. And so there was there was some of that as well. There was a falling away, and there was a, yeah, you know, traction. what we found is a lot of the new people, man, they're like, they're all in. They're excited. They're, they're motivated. We got like a new church, man. Like 80% of yeah. our church is new in the last couple of years. We're also in Tampa. And like you guys in Texas, yeah. Um, there's lots of people moving, you know, to our areas and, and they're looking to plug in somewhere. So, yeah, 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 yeah. that's, that's definitely all facts, man. Uh, yeah. my only, my only challenge, uh, for both individuals is, is God going to be God of your life when he mm -hmm. gives you yes? Yep. How do you handle no? Yep. And why, yep. why, why? Why have we over preached the blessings of God yep. more than the fruit of the spirit of long suffering? And so we have classically conditioned people who know how to handle the blessing, that's but good. not the test. Yeah. We don't know how to handle that. Verse. The answer that's weak for right or it's delayed. Delay doesn't mean denial, but you might not get that thing that you're praying about or that vision or whatever. It might not be for five years. Yeah. Can you wait and keep doing the work? Yeah. As God prepares you and gets you ready for that for the next X amount of time. Yeah. That Western Hemisphere mm -hmm. Christianity, the American church is used to the God that blesses. There mm -hmm. we don't know how to handle the God that allows adversity. We we do not know how to handle God that allows us to go through. Everybody always preaches about coming out without smelling like smoke. You mm -hmm. know. What about when you're in that thing, you know? No, he came out the lions and he shut the mouth of the lion. What was it like spending the night with beast? And the same God that delivered him out is the same God that let him stay there. No. <laughs> He's just saying. Yeah. So that that's the part that I really want people to get roots 
Yeah. So that when adversity does come, you bend but don't break. Yeah. And we read the, we read the Bible many times through that through that micro microwave lens, mm -hmm. and we think everything happens so quickly. But if you really look at the context, a lot of times there there was some time like even like we're doing a series on Nehemiah right now, and everyone thinks about oh Nehemiah rebuilt the walls yeah. in fifty two, which that was a decent amount of time, but it's still rather quick to rebuild a whole city. Like oh my gosh, that was we love fast. Yeah. Our culture is addicted to fast. But then we ignore the, the, the rest of the book in Nehemiah where he stayed there for years. Mm -hmm. And although physical rebuilding was done, he had to rebuild the people spiritually, yeah. emotionally, economically. Mm -hmm. That took a while to do all of that. And then even when at the end of Nehemiah, he went back to uh, be with the king and back to Babylon for a little bit for uh, scholars say probably around a year, year and a half. And when he left, everybody started wilding out again. He had to come back and then, like, wreck shop and be like, hey, y'all yeah. are messing up the church. This is, yeah. why, this is how it's <laughs> messed up in the first place. And y'all going, you, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's why, why stuff like this is needed. Yeah. And good leadership conversation is needed. Because yeah. if we don't lead well, every time we break our sabbatical, they'll build a golden calf. Yeah. Every time. Yep. Every time. It's like, yo, I need you to know the Lord for yourself. So yeah. when I'm going to go seek him for myself, y'all don't go back to the gods of Egypt, you know? Yeah. And that, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, getting, that is, bro. Getting the spotlight off our pastors. We're not celebrities, we're servants. You yeah. don't believe in me. You believe in Jesus. Yeah. So. Well, hey, man, last thing I want to yeah. ask you about. Thanks for hanging out today for a little bit with me, man. For sure. Um, you know, you were texting me the other day man about and i saw somebody put it in the in the chat just a little bit ago mm -hmm. hey do you have any books oh. so oh. <laughs> you're texting me you got this you got this book coming out man so tell me a little bit about the book man and like what's the what, what's the plan for it man i want to hear about it bro yes yeah. i believe this book is going to be a life changer uh i think there's certain books that drop that kind of change everything. Like the five love languages to me is that like a book like that. Yeah, it just yeah. I still read that one all the time right. with couples. So I, I'm I'm praying if it, if it's God's will for him to have a significant impact with this book called Heart Rehab, and it's kind of leaning into that Therapy Thursday stuff. Okay. That I'm recognizing that God is asking for a lot of people to do things, but until that heart has been rehabilitated by the gospel, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. until i heal you can't do it that i'm telling tommy that has been a game changer for my ministry for my life and yeah. from i just i approach every session differently because i understand the gospel can't penetrate through hard soil of trauma it can't it, it, it's not that it's not powerful enough it's that the heart is so calloused in that area i can't love my neighbor yeah. i can't and so so that's really what the book is about. My um, the goal is to have it come out this summer, um, prayerfully. Now, you say summer, like what? Like what part of summer? Because because you saw my text, man. You saw my text. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want like June of 2023 so that I could do a book tour in the fall. That's, Let's go, and, Lord and I, willing. That's what I'll do. I think there could be like a like a just a, a warm up pre tour. Mm -hmm. book the summer yes it's, it's <laughs> at cross of the church in tampa you are no i'm coming bro you can come and just test it out man you know just <laughs> guinea pigs <laughs> yeah you can already know i'm coming man i uh yeah. the book the book we're trying to set it up to be where at the end of each chapter is like a barcode yeah you get like a qr code where you can scan it and it'll take you to a video it's just different oh. It's different. You could it'll take you to a video about this chapter. Yes. This is where I'm personally talking to you about it, along with a heart rehab masterclass. So, trying to push both of those. So, um, I think it's gonna be good. Did, did I give you a copy of my frames book in the box? You didn't. Oh man, I gotta send you one. So, because I actually put the book in a box called Frames. It's about perspective. And each chapter is like a different kind of frame versus another frame, like pessimistic frames versus optimistic frames, greedy frames versus generous frames, and et cetera, et cetera. But um, put it in a box so every book comes in a custom box with all the graphics on it. You open it up, there's actually a pair of frames inside of it. There's a pair of custom sunglasses. The book is in there. A couple other goodies and stuff. But I did that, bro. I did a master class with it. So it's a book and a master class. 
at the end of every chapter, there's a QR code. It's eight chapters, so there's eight videos that they can watch. I put them on a private platform. So I gotta, I, I'll talk to you about that more on the side, man, and just share some of the stuff that I've learned as I, I've done that a couple of different times. And um, yeah, it's a blessing. So it's an experience. It's not just this reading thing, but there's also the video yeah. with the master class mm -hmm. and the whole box thing. Everybody's like, yo. That's fire, bro. Yeah, man. So we'll, we'll talk on that, man. Definitely, bro. I'm excited, man, uh, for your book. Excited to connect with you. And so I'm going to have you pray for us in just a second, but I told sure. people we we're going to make the announcement at the end. So let me give the announcement for those that have been tapping in that are, you know, connected with me and connected with Flavor Fest. Flavor Fest, again, is the Urban Leadership Conference that we do every year to equip urban church leaders. Um, so it's for pastors, church planners, church leaders, artists, entrepreneurs, creatives, um, people that are in the nonprofit space, working in the urban community. And so we've been doing this conference for over 20 years, and we gather uh, about three to 400 leaders every year in Tampa, Florida at Crossover Church. And that's where uh, Pastor Jerry came and preached our opening session in October of 2022. So here's the big news, y'all. A lot of y'all been asking, what's the dates? When can we register for this year? Uh, we are taking Flavor Fest this year on tour. First time ever. And we are going to five cities. And so we feel this responsibility, this mantle. We've been doing this for years, training urban leaders. And we know a lot of churches like me and Pastor Jerry just talked, a lot of churches are struggling right now. Yeah. They're discouraged. A lot of leaders are discouraged. Um, they're, they're maybe half of what they used to be. Their budgets are lower. They're, there's a lot of needs in their community, a lot of tension, all kinds of things going on. And people need resources. They need encouragement. They need fellowship. They need some fun. They need some hope. And so we know everybody can't get to Tampa. Everybody can't get to Houston, right? Inflation, everything else. People are just, you know, got a lot of stuff going on. So we're taking it to five different cities. We feel this responsibility to do that because our church is thriving and growing. And we feel that mantle. A lot of other organizations that did some training in the urban space have kind of went dormant since the pandemic. And so we've never done this before. We're running the church. So we don't necessarily have the time to do this, but we're, we're biting this off because we feel like the Lord is is telling us to do this. So in 2023, we're going to New York City. So I am in New York City right now. I'm in a hotel room right now. And uh, you can see behind me the trees. They ain't got no leaves on them. This ain't Florida, bro. It ain't, ain't Texas. And so I, I'm here in New York today uh, because we're going to be, uh, my, my guy Richie Righteous is picking me up in a few minutes. And we're going to go tour the church building that we're going to be using here. Uh, we're going to be in New York City April 22nd. Uh, we're going to have two general sessions. It's going to be like a one-day event, two general sessions, two breakout workshop tracks uh, for pastors and church planning. Uh, Urban Youth Workers Institute is partnering with us to do uh, a track for youth ministry um, in New York. Uh, we're going to have a track for entrepreneurs and a track for artists as well. And so uh, then we're doing a concert that night as well. So, uh, so stay tuned. But we're going to be in New York City, April 22nd, Los Angeles. May the 5th and 6th, we're partnering with City to City, uh, church planting organization out there. We will be uh, in Houston, Texas. Uh, we're still working on that. <laughs> we might be partnering with Pastor Jerry. Uh, we're working on the details on that. We're coming to Houston this summer, and we're coming to Atlanta this summer as well in June and July. So stay tuned on that. Uh, we're going to be putting everything up on the website soon. And, and then, of course, we will be in Tampa. Uh, for the main conference, the full conference at Crossover Church. And that's going to be moved back a little bit. We're going to do it the first weekend of November, November 2nd through the 4th. We're going to push it away a little bit from hurricane season. Uh, hurricane season has been messing us up couple last couple times. So flavorfest.org has all the details. We'll have all the details like within the next week or so. We're still tweaking some of the details. We'll have some of the speakers artists, workshops, all the locations will be locked in. We're almost there. Uh, we've been working hard on this, um, so pray for us. But normally, like I said, we train about 100, uh, I mean, 300 to 400 leaders this year. We're praying to train well over 1,000 leaders collectively in, in all those different cities combined. So, yeah, and uh, Pastor Jerry's probably going to be a part of it. Yeah. And some of it definitely so, <laughs> with, you know. We, we're gonna get that book that book out at Flavor Fest. Absolutely, man. <laughs> hey, I'm with it. Hold me accountable with it, bro. Yeah, man. Uh
Yeah, and we got to talk on the side, side, bro. Yeah. And uh, I, I'll share all this, all the stuff I've learned, man. Yeah. Writing is is you gotta, it's a discipline, bro. Who you tell it? It is, bro. It is. <laughs> it's, it's so many distractions yeah. and other things going on, right? You gotta. Uh, but hey, man, uh, thanks for jumping on. Normally we're on YouTube, but we jumped on IG today because. I didn't. I wasn't in our podcast studio at the church, and we yeah. tried to do YouTube live, but uh, me and Jerry couldn't figure it out. It's a new feature. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna study yeah. that. <laughs> but hey, man, could you pray for us, bro? Uh, pray for us. That's what I always ask people to do at the end of the podcast. Pray for everybody that's watching and listening, all the the leaders that are out there. I know a lot of your 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 crowd has jumped in as well, yeah. man. Uh, Father God, first we thank you for being awesome. Thank you for allowing us to cross over to see another year, God, and we are simply just requesting for you to give us hearts of clay. Allow our hearts to be like the clay after a fresh spring rain, moldable and pliable so that you could use us for your glory. I thank you that uh, arrogance is never a part of our anatomy, mm -hmm. uh, for you made us from the dust of the earth, O oh God, and whenever we inhale dust, we sneeze, which means you don't want us to be full of ourselves. Help us to have a heart posture of humility. And I thank you for every leader, every ambassador, every world changer, that we will always remember that ultimately God is for your glory, not about us, not about them. Give us a shepherd's heart to love your people. I thank you that you're building a hatred of sin and we don't play with wolves. So if there's any, any, anything in our life that would distract us from our purpose, distract us from our assignment, help us to be bold enough to sever it to cut it off so that we could be focused on you. Give us the grace, give us the passion, and give us the fire. Light our hearts on fire so that the world could forever watch us burn for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for tapping in today. Pastor Jerry, thank you. You guys can stay connected with Flavor Fest uh, right here on IG or, or on YouTube at Flavor Fest, or you can stay connected to my channel, uh, Urban D 813 and you'll find out more details of what's coming up next, man. So, Jerry, man, we'll be in touch, bro. For sure, Come man. Love you, man. Town. Coming to H-Town, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. God bless everybody. God bless. Have a good weekend. Peace.